Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel and to the Linux version of my first episode in my series Server-Side Swift using Vapor. In this video, I will show you how to install Swift and Vapor toolbox on your Ubuntu system, as well as what IDE you can use to develop your server-side Swift application with syntax highlighting. Now let's dive right into it and have a look at the Vapor website. It has two prominent links, one of them is join the chat and I can strongly highly recommend joining the chat since it's the kindest community I've ever come across and whenever you face a challenge something you cannot solve yourself the whole community is eager and up to help you out the next link is get started or the next button with if we click on that we will get redirected to the documentation of vapor and we will follow the ubuntu guide to install the vapor toolbox and swift now the first step we have to do is adding the Vapor's apt repo. And we would do that by copying and pasting that command simply in our terminal and hitting enter. Once that is done, there is just one more step to do, which is installing Swift and Vapor with, sim with one single line. Now copying and pasting this line into our terminal will download and install Swift as well as the Vapor toolbox. This one gets really quickly executed for me because I already have Swift installed and the Vapor toolbox, but for you, you will have to wait a bit, a little moment until Swift got downloaded. Now, when the installment is done, you can check that everything worked out fine with version dash dash uh, Swift version, Swift dash dash version. You should have a Swift version printed as well as Vapor dash dash help. You should have some commands. Um, suggested that you can supply. So which means Swift and Vapor Toolbox got installed successfully. Perfect, so almost done. The next thing you would want to do is, for example, uh, download Atom. The IDE you can use to develop your service at Swift application. So you would go to atom.io and download the IDE onto your system and install it. Once you have installed it, you can open it and install the syntax highlighting for Swift, which is, one sec, it takes a small while. Close that and that. Once it's open, it will have a welcome guide and you can go to install a package, open installer, and then just search for Swift. Once you search for Swift, it will show language dash Swift, you install that and you will have Swift highlighting. All right, so we are all set to actually now create our first Vapor project on Linux. Let's do that. So we go into our terminal and use the Vapor toolbox we just installed to create a new project. Go to the location you want your project to be located in, for me it's desktop, and just type in Vapor new and then the name you want to have for your project. In my case, it's Zelda. So I hit enter and what it does is it just clones the API template and a template that is provided by Vapor onto your system and renaming it to the name you've provided. We can actually go on GitHub since it's open source and have a look at that GitHub uh, Vapor, have a look at that template and Vapor Toolbox makes it easier for you so you don't have to go here, clone the template onto your system, rename it and then start developing, right? Instead, you just go to your terminal, type in Vapor New, whatever project name you want, and that's done. All right, cool. So it does it does tell me, for example, yeah, initializing Git repository failed uh, because I haven't set up Git, but that's also not the video uh, to show you how to set up Git. I'm sure you will figure out uh, it's pretty easy. To do that, it's also not necessary to develop server-side Swift application, not at all. It has nothing to do with that. So you don't have to really worry about that. Okay, perfect. So we have our Vapor project here, right? Let's have a look into it and see what files are there. We have one file that is basically important for us, which is package.swift. It is the uh, description of dependencies we have for our server-side Swift application, and that's mainly it. On the Mac OS, you would basically now create an Xcode project so then you can open it and run the application. However, on Linux, we don't have Xcode. Xcode, so what do we do instead? Basically, we will just use Atom to open our project and start writing our code. So let's do that. We open Atom and say, okay, open folder and wherever our project is located. Opening that, yep. 
and we can close this 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 and this right now on the first glance it might look intimidating but really what it's what's impo important here is the app folder this is where all our code will lie in this is where all where we will put all our code inside now uh, in a later episode uh, I will go off uh, I will talk about a little bit more in detail about the public folder um, circle CI circle test folder and all the other files that might be interesting and um, important to, to explain but for now all we need to know is our code will go forever into app and what I like to do is since this template comes with some implementation already I like to like remove everything from the template that is not necessarily needed to run a server-side switch application on its bare minimum right so I want to strip down this template to its bare minimum to just keep our server uh, up and running so let's go and delete for that the controller folder and delete the model folder and also go into configure remove the whole configuration underneath router as well as above of the router so we only have the registration of the router left also in the roots.swift file you can delete everything inside the function that is called roots so we have basically nothing in here left right all right i can't type on linux obviously <laughs> Uh, all right, so if you got nothing in here left, there's one catch. So Atom, as it seems, does not uh, immediately sync your files that you're editing here to your files uh, on your system. So whenever you are changing code, always make sure that this blue dot up here is not given, which means it just shows that you haven't saved the file. So Control S for saving, Control S for saving. So it really, really applies uh, the changes to the file it's a little catch because if we now go to compile our code we want the code to be compiled that is up to date and not the like we see something else in atom on the file system there is the file is still the old state and we are compiling with the old state and wonder why things don't work work out or why things don't compile so always keep in mind to save your files all right so that's basically it what we need to then go to the terminal and build and run our project. So what you do is you type in vapor build to compile, also to fetch dependencies if you haven't yet, right? On the first build, you will uh, fetch the dependencies you haven't fetched yet, and then it will create a build folder and compile all your code into one binary. After that's done, it will take a while uh, on the first run. After that's done, we will apply a vapor run command to fire up our server. All right, something went wrong for me. Let's have a look. I have inside uh, here, everything looks fine. And uh, here, everything looks fine actually as well. Um, am I missing a curly bracket? I do. So that's the, <laughs> that's the issue. Whoops. Uh, so yeah, I have to save that file and once again build it and it will be faster now because we have fetched already and we have built a lot of stuff already it just failed at this little step and it's done okay so once it's done as i said we can now say vapor run and fire up our server on localhost 8080 let's have a look opening up firefox going to localhost at the port 8080 hitting enter and we get a response of our server. It's an error, but it's a response. It says it's an error because we haven't implement, uh, implemented the handling of that request we are making to our server. Now, let me for short uh, talk about what kind of request we are making here. Now, whenever you're opening a website through your browser, it's always a GET request to the URL you're passing up in here. So we are currently making a get request to our server at the URL, the index URL, the root URL. Uh, this index is never really or sometimes not shown, but it's the index uh, request, uh, the index URL we are making a request to, which is a get request. There are multiple requests 
that uh, you can make. Uh, the most common ones are get, delete, put and patch. So get, delete, put and patch are the most common ones. And whenever you are using your browser to open a website, uh, you are always making a get request to the URL. So right now we're making a get request at the index to our server and not handling it. Why don't we just go to our application and handle that request? So we go into roots.swift and type in router. We want to handle a get request at the URL index and we will have this closure executed once that request comes in and we will get a request passed into our closure. Now, we won't use that variable inside of here right now, but that's normally how your closure looks like when you are um, defining a new root and HTTP um, request uh, method that you are handling, which is get in this case. So what do we want to respond to a request that is made to our index with a get request? We want to respond with a string, for example, and just say, hey, listen, don't forget to save the file. Now we have to recompile, build our application and then run it again. So in our terminal control C to stop the current running process, hitting vapor build to compile and build our project once again, because if we have written new code, once that is done, we can hit vapor run again and then go to the browser and refresh. And that's it. You have successfully implemented your first server side Swift application on Linux, making a request to your application and responding to that request with a string saying, Hey, listen, I mean, yeah, that's not too much, but it's the foundation. And with that being said, you are now, a now able to follow along my whole series, my whole upcoming episodes. Although I'm on a Mac OS and using Xcode, that doesn't really matter because you can just code along using Atom on Linux and build and run the application anyway. So that's the episode. If you don't want to miss out on future episodes, make sure to subscribe, hit like, and also let me know in the comment section your feedback. Constructive feedback is always welcomed. In the description box, you'll find some links. For example, the link to download Atom as an IDE, the link to Discord for the Vapor community, as well as my Instagram, where you can join the community because I'm super active there and also accessible and um, a link to Patreon because I want to do that full time and you can support me by selecting the right tier and downloading every source code of every video. I hope you liked it and see you in the next one. Bye.